In this video, we will use pedigrees to trace autosomal dominant traits through generations in a family. Autosomal dominant disorders you might be familiar with include Huntington's disease and achondroplasia, which is a common type of dwarfism. In this case, autosomal refers to the fact that the trait that you're looking at is associated with a gene on an autosome, like chromosome 1 or chromosome 2. This means that each person has two copies of this gene. And the fact that the trait is dominant means that an affected person must carry at least one dominant allele associated with that trait. So for example, let's say the gene associated with this trait has a dominant and a recessive allele. When dealing with a trait that is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner, a person will be affected if they are either homozygous dominant or heterozygous, and a person will be unaffected by the trait if they are homozygous recessive. Let's take a look at some pedigrees to learn the rules of autosomal dominant inheritance. When you have one or two affected parents, you can have either affected or unaffected children. That is a result of the fact that the parents can be either heterozygous or homozygous dominant, which means that they can pass on either the dominant or the recessive allele, and they could have children of any genotype. That said, when you have two unaffected parents, they cannot have affected offspring. That is because two unaffected parents must be homozygous recessive, which means that their children must all be homozygous recessive and therefore unaffected as well. With these two rules in mind, let's take a look at some practice pedigrees to see if we can tell if the trait is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. When we look at this pedigree, we see that we have two affected parents having one affected and one unaffected child. This checks out in an autosomal dominant mode of inheritance because these parents could be heterozygous, producing one child that is homozygous recessive and one that has at least one dominant allele. Moving forward, we can see from this subfamily that both parents are unaffected and all of their children are unaffected which again is what we would expect, as they all must be homozygous recessive. And over here, we see that we have this unaffected mother and an affected father producing an unaffected daughter and an affected son. That will all work out if this father is heterozygous, and the son here is also heterozygous, receiving the father's dominant allele and the mother's recessive allele. So all in all, this pedigree could be representing a trait that is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. Now let's take a look at this pedigree. Could the trait in this pedigree be inherited in an autosomal dominant manner? Automatically, I look at this subfamily, in which I see two unaffected parents having an affected son. If the trait were inherited in an autosomal dominant manner, then these two parents would have to be homozygous recessive, and they could not have a child that is affected. With autosomal dominant inheritance, this affected child would have to have at least one dominant allele, which these two unaffected parents cannot provide. So this pedigree is not following the rules of autosomal dominant inheritance. It must be tracing a trait with some other mode of inheritance. So now you should feel comfortable determining if a trait in a pedigree is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. If you'd like to learn more, see my videos on tracing other modes of inheritance in pedigrees, like sex-linked traits or autosomal recessive traits.